kiln is a thermally insulated chamber, a type of oven, that produces temperatures sufficient to complete some processes such as hardening, drying, or chemical changes. Various industries and trades use kilns to harden objects made from clay into pottery, tiles and bricks. Various industries use rotary kilns for pyroprocessing, to calcinate ores, produce cement, lime, and many other materials. Uses of kilns The earliest known kiln dates to around 6000 BC, and was found at the Yaramtipa site in modern Iraq. Neolithic kilns were able to produce temperatures greater than 900 degrees Celsius. Uses include annealing, fusing and deforming glass, or fusing metallic oxide paints to the surface of glass, ceramics, brickworks, smelting or to extract metal, heating limestone with clay in the manufacture of Portland cement, the cement kiln, heating limestone to make quicklime or calcium oxide, the lime kiln, heating gypsum to make plaster of Paris, for cremation, drying of tobacco leaves, drying malted barley for brewing and other fermentations, drying hops for brewing, drying corn before grinding or storage, sometimes called a corn kiln, corn drying kiln, drying green lumber so it can be used immediately, drying wood for use as firewood, heating wood to the point of pyrolysis to produce charcoal, ceramic kilns, kilns are an essential part of the manufacture of all ceramics, ceramics require heat at high temperatures so chemical and physical reactions will occur to permanently alter the unfired body, in the case of pottery, clay materials are shaped, dried and then fired in a kiln. The final characteristics are determined by the composition and preparation of the clay body, by the temperature at which it is fired. After a first firing glazes may be used and the ware is fired a second time to fuse the glaze into the body. A third firing as a lower temperature may be required to fix over glaze decoration. Modern kilns often have sophisticated electrical control systems to firing regime, although pyrometric devices are often also used. Clay consists of fine-grained particles that are relatively weak and porous. Clay is combined with other minerals to create a workable clay body. Part of the firing process includes sintering. This heats the clay until the particles partially melt and flow together, creating a strong, single mass, composed of a glassy phase interspersed with pores and crystalline material. Through firing, the pores are reduced in size, causing the material to shrink slightly. This crystalline material is predominantly consists of silicon and aluminium oxides. Types of kiln In the broadest terms, there are two types of kiln, intermittent and continuous, both sharing the same basic characteristics of being an insulated box with a controlled inner temperature and atmosphere. A continuous kiln, sometimes called a tunnel kiln, is a long structure in which only the central portion is directly heated from the cool entrance, where is slowly transported through the kiln, and its temperature is increased steadily as it approaches the central, hottest part of the kiln. From there, it continues down the kiln and the surrounding temperature is reduced until it exits the kiln at near room temperature. A continuous kiln is energy efficient, because heat given off during cooling is recycled to preheat the incoming ware. In some designs the ware is left in one place, while the heating zone moves across it. Kilns in this type include, Hoffman kiln, Ball's trench kiln, Ablar kiln, Roller kiln, a special type of kiln, common in tableware and tile manufacture, is the roller hearth kiln, in which ware placed on bats is carried through the kiln on rollers. In the intermittent kiln, the ware to be fired is placed into the kiln, the kiln is closed, and the internal temperature increased according to a schedule. After the firing is completed, both the kiln and the ware are cooled. The ware is removed, the kiln is cleaned and the next cycle begins. Kilns in this type include, Clamp Kiln, Scova Kiln, Scotch Kiln, Downdraft Kiln, Shuttle Kilns. This is a car bottom kiln with a door on one or both ends. 
burners are positioned top and bottom on each side, creating a turbulent circular airflow. This type of kiln is generally a multi-car design and is used for processing white wares, technical ceramics and refractories in batches. Depending upon size and mass of ware, shuttle kilns may be equipped with car-moving devices to transfer fired and unfired ware in and out of the kiln. Shuttle kilns can be either updraft or downdraft in design. A shuttle kiln derives its name from the fact that kiln cars can enter a shuttle kiln from either end of the kiln for processing, whereas a tunnel kiln has flow in only one direction. Traditional kilns kiln technology is very old. The development of the kiln from a simple earth and trench filled with pots and fuel, pit firing, to modern methods happened in stages. One improvement was to build a firing chamber around pots with baffles and a stoking hole. This conserved heat. A chimney stack improves the airflow or drawer of the kiln, thus burning the fuel more completely. Early examples of kilns found in Britain include those that made roof tiles during the Roman occupation. These kilns were built up the side of a slope, such that a fire could be lit at the bottom and the heat would rise up into the kiln. Traditional kilns include Anagama kiln. The Asian Anagama kiln has been used since medieval times and is considered the oldest style of production kiln. Brought to Japan from China via Korea in the 5th century, this kiln usually consists of one long firing chamber, pierced with smaller ware stacking ports on one side, with a firebox at one end and a flue at the other. Firing time can vary from one day to several weeks. Traditional Anagama kilns are also built on a slope to allow for a better draft. Khmer kiln Quite similar to the Anagama kiln however, traditional Khmer kilns had a flat roof. Chinese, Korean or Japanese kilns have an arch roof. These types of kiln vary in size and can measure in the tens of meters. The firing time also varies and can last several days. Bottle kiln a type of intermittent kiln, usually coal-fired, formerly used in the firing of pottery. Such a kiln was surrounded by a tall brick hovel or cone, of typical bottle shape. The tableware was enclosed in sealed fireclay saggers. As the heat and smoke from the fires passed through the oven it would be fired at temperatures up to 1,400 degrees Celsius. Biscuit kiln The first firing would take place in the biscuit kiln, Gloss kiln, the biscuit ware was glazed and fired again in the larger gloss kilns. Muffle kiln, this was used to fire over glazed decoration, at a temperature under 800 degrees Celsius. In these cool kilns the smoke from the fires passed through flues outside the oven. Catenary arch kiln, typically used for the firing of pottery using salt, these by their form tend to retain their shape over repeated heating and cooling cycles, whereas other types require extensive metalwork supports. Noburagama kiln, this is an evolution from anagama design as a multi-chamber kiln, usually built on a slope, where wood is stacked from the front firebox at first. Chevros kiln, invented in Chevres, France, it efficiently generated high temperatures 1,240 degrees Celsius to produce waterproof ceramic bodies and easy-to-obtain glazes. It features a downdraft design that produces high temperature in shorter time, even with wood firing. Burry box kiln, similar to previous one. Modern kilns with the industrial age, kilns were designed to use electricity and more refined fuels, including natural gas and propane. Many large industrial pottery kilns use natural gas, as it is generally clean, efficient and easy to control. Modern kilns can be fitted with computerized controls allowing for fine adjustments during the firing. A user may choose to control the rate of temperature climb or ramp, hold or soak the temperature at any given point, or control the rate of cooling. Both electric and gas kilns are common for smaller scale production in industry and craft, handmade and sculptural work. Modern kilns include 
retort kiln, a type of kiln which can reach temperatures around 1,500 degrees Celsius for extended periods of time. Typically, these kilns are used in industrial purposes and feature movable charging cars which make up the bottom and door of the kiln. Electric kilns Kilns operated by electricity were developed in the 20th century, primarily for smaller scale use such as in schools, universities, and hobby centers. The atmosphere in most designs of electric kiln is rich in oxygen, as there is no open flame to consume oxygen molecules. However, reducing conditions can be created with appropriate gas input, or by using sagas in a particular way. Feller kiln brought contemporary design to wood firing by reusing unburnt gas from the chimney to heat intake air before it enters the firebox. This leads to an even shorter firing cycle and less wood consumption. This design requires external ventilation to prevent the in-chimney radiator from melting, being typically in metal. The result is a very efficient wood kiln firing one cubic meter of ceramics with one cubic meter of wood. Microwave-assisted firing This technique combine microwave energy with more conventional energy sources, such as radiant gas or electric heating, to process ceramic materials to the required high temperatures. Microwave-assisted firing offers significant economic benefits. Top Hat Kiln An intermittent kiln of a type sometimes used to fire pottery. The ware is set on a refractory hearth, or plinth, over which a box-shaped cover is lowered. Wood Drying Kiln Green wood coming straight from the felled tree has far too high a moisture content to be commercially useful and will rot, warp and split. Both hardwoods and softwood must be left to dry out until the moisture content is between 18% and 8%. This can be a long process or it is speeded up by use of a kiln. A variety of kiln technologies exist today. Conventional, dehumidification, solar, vacuum and radio frequency. Conventional wood dryer either package type or track type construction. Most hardwood lumber kilns are side loader kilns in which four trucks are used to load lumber packages into the kiln. Most softwood kilns are track types in which the timber is loaded on kiln, track cars for loading the kiln. Modern high temperature, high air velocity conventional kilns can typically dry 1 inch thick green wood in 10 hours down to a moisture content of 18%. However, 1 inch thick green red oak requires about 28 days to dry down to a moisture content of 8%. Heat is typically introduced via steam running through thin, tube heat exchangers controlled by on-off pneumatic valves. Humidity is removed by a system of vents, the specific layout of which are usually particular to a given manufacturer. In general, cool dry air is introduced at one end of the kiln while warm moist air is expelled at the other. Hardwood conventional kilns also require the introduction of humidity via either steam spray or cold water misting systems to keep the relative humidity inside the kiln from dropping too low during the drying cycle. Fan directions are typically reversed periodically to ensure even drying of larger kiln charges. Most softwood kilns operate below 240 degrees Fahrenheit temperature. Hardwood kiln drying schedules typically keep the dry bulb temperature below 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Difficult to dry species might not exceed 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Dehumidification kilns are similar to other kilns in basic construction and drying times are usually comparable. Heat comes primarily from an integral dehumidification unit that also removes humidity. Auxiliary heat is often provided early in the schedule to supplement the dehumidifier. Solar kilns are conventional kilns, typically built by hobbyists to keep initial investment costs low. Heat is provided via solar radiation, while internal air circulation is typically passive. Vacuum and radio frequency kilns reducing the air pressure to attempt to speed up the drying process. A variety of these vacuum technologies exist, varying primarily in the method heat is introduced into the wood charge. 
hot water plant and vacuum kilns use aluminum heating plates with the water circulating within as the heat source, and typically operate at significantly reduced absolute pressure. Discontinuous and SSV use atmosphere pressure to introduce heat into the kiln charge. The entire kiln charge comes up to full atmospheric pressure. The air in the chamber is then heated and finally a vacuum is pulled as the charge cools. SSV run at partial atmospheres, typically around one-third of full atmospheric pressure. In a hybrid of vacuum and conventional kiln technology kilns use microwave radiation to heat the kiln charge, and typically have the highest operating cost due to the heat of vaporization being provided by electricity rather than local fossil fuel or waste. Wood sources the economics of different wood drying technologies are based on the total energy, capital, insurance, risk, environmental impacts, labor, maintenance, and product degradation costs. These costs, which can be a significant part of plant costs, involve the differential impact of the presence of drying equipment in a specific plant. Every piece of equipment from the green trimmer to the infeed system at the plane or mill is part of the drying system. The true costs of the drying system can only be determined when comparing the total plant costs and risks with and without drying. Kiln-dried firewood was pioneered during the 1980s. This was later adopted extensively in Europe due to the economic and practical benefits of selling wood with a lower moisture content. The total air emissions produced by wood kilns, including their heat source, can be significant. Typically, the higher the temperature the kiln operates at, the larger amount of emissions are produced. This is especially true in the drying of thin veneers and high-temperature drying of softwoods. Gallery Brick-making kilns Mekong Delta The cargo boat in the foreground is carrying the rice chaff used as fuel for the firing. A wood-fired pottery kiln in Hoi and Vietnam, a catenary arch kiln used for firing high-temperature electron tube-grade aluminium oxide ceramics, a two-story porcelain kiln with furnaces at Irlandia in Chevres, France circa 1880, could representation of a beehive kiln, could representation of a tunnel kiln, 